fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Hooray! The people in Baker's Gap liked the man who owned the bank. His name was McFarland, but everyone called him Mac. His red face was generally crinkled by a good-natured smile. He was a good citizen, a solid citizen. It was unusual for McFarland to be out after dark. It was even more unusual for him to have a furtive manner or a look of apprehension. Yet he had both as he made his way through the night toward a small shack that stood beyond the edge of town. The shack was dark, and Mac wondered if the men he planned to meet had changed their plans. But then... Stop right there. Huh? Oh, I suppose you're on guard, huh? Just to make sure you came alone, McFarland. Uh, what's that over your head? A sack with holes to look through. Hide in your face. You'll find it the same with the others. It'll be just as well if you don't know who you're dealing with. Uh, to think I'd be a party to this kind of a meeting. Any time you don't like how we do things, you just go right back home and call the whole deal off. What do we do now? Go inside the shag. Then it's dark. The windows are covered. Grab on the door three times, it'll be opened. How many are inside? Six. They've all got their heads covered. Go on. Grab three times. That's the signal. Come in, McFarlane. Go on, do as he says. I'm staying outside. Look around, McFarlane. Don't recognize any of us. Every one would be afraid to show his face. <laughs> that chair is for you. I'll stand. I came here because you said you had some information about my laddie. We told you what it would cost. Did you bring the cash? I did. Put it right there on the table. Beneath the oil lamp so we can see it. Before you see my cash, I'll see some proof that you know about my boy. We know all about him. Talk. He joined the army. He fought in a number of battles and wrote you about him. Aye, that much is true. Then his letters stopped. You heard no more. Finally, you had word from the War Department. You were told that he'd been killed. Aye. You tried to get more details, but failed. His mother and I felt that there was room to doubt that he'd been killed. There were many cases where men turned up after being reported as dead. 
Oh, tell me, man. What word have you for me? Don't push me, McFarlane. Why are you doing it like this? Why all the mystery about it? You'll understand that later on. Well, tell me, is Rodney living or dead? I'm ready to pay your price. Maybe you won't like the truth. Huh? Your son didn't die on the field of honor. No? And then he's alive? He's not alive. He's dead, all right. But he was shot. Shot? But you said... He was said... executed by a firing squad. Oh, no, no, man. Shot because he was a traitor. It's a contemptible lie, and I don't believe it. Believe it or not, it's the truth, and we can prove it. The proof's for sale at our price. Oh, I can't believe it, Rodney, a traitor. No, no. Speak up. You want the proof, or don't you? Your wife might like to see it. No, no, that must never be. The news would kill Mary. There must be a mistake. My Rodney, my laddie could never be a traitor. You needn't believe me. There's sworn statements from men in his regiment. They're here in this envelope. Uh, I think I didn't want to see the statements. Now, just a minute, McFarlane. We went to considerable trouble and expense to get him. No, I... Maybe you... Rodney's wife would like to see him. Ah, uh, that pretty lass. No, no. She must not see them. How about your grandson? The wee one? It wouldn't be nice to show him what we got here when he gets a little older. Now, would it? Man, what are you getting at? The best thing for you to do, Mac, is to buy what we got and burn it up. That's one way to make sure your wife doesn't learn about her son's disgrace. Or Rodney's wife or son. But they must never know. To crush them indeed. That's why we thought you'd like to deal with us. Uh, I will pay for what you have. Good. A thousand dollars, you said. I have it here. On the table. Thanks. Now, give me the envelope. Oh, you don't get the envelope for the money you brought here. What is that? No, you paid the thousand for the information. That was the deal. I gave you the true facts. But you if said you that... want these statements, as well as the information you've already got, you'll have to pay some more. No, hold on, man. Don't try to skin me. Not at all. I kept my word. I brought the money. And you got the information. We didn't say we'd give you the signed statements for the price. If I pay no more, what will you do? Well, perhaps your wife would pay to keep the truth from Rodney's wife and son. Oh, no, no. You must not go to Mary. Listen, man, I'm a banker, but I'm not rich. You I... can take all the cash you need out of the bank. But that is other people's money. Banks get robbed every day. What? You are suggesting that I rob my own bank. We'll help, so it'll look like an outside job. We'll keep you in the clear. Oh, you swine, you filthy swine. Our price is $10,000. Isn't that right, boys? Uh, no. What? Who said that? Who said no? The price is too high. Who's speaking? I can't tell with your heads covered. Who's in here that shouldn't be? I am. Why, well, you... Oh. Get him. Stop him. Look out who you're hitting. There he goes. The window. Come on. Stop him! Get that man! I see him! Open that door! Hey, he went that way. Of course, he's in the tree. Who was he? How'd he get in? He must have taken a place with one of the boys. Get a candle lighted inside the shack. Hurry up. See if the cash is still on the table. Here, I got a candle. Have it lighted in a second. What about the envelope, boss? You had it. He snatched it out of my hand when he hit me. Smashed the light, then came at me. Hey, now we can see. Hey, the cash is gone. Hey, What's that? Yeah. Well, there's a cartridge on the table. Let me see it. Silver. Silver bullet. Oh, That's it. He called that horse silver. He left a silver bullet. Boys, that man was the Lone Ranger. The, the Lone Ranger? McFarland, he hasn't helped you one bit. Fact is, he's cost you money. Now my price has gone up. You'll pay 15000 to keep your folks from learning the truth about your son. 15000 I'll get that Lone Ranger and get back that proof. And if I don't, I'll get the same statement signed all over again. You're going to pay and pay plenty. After his escape, the Lone Ranger removed the hood that covered his head, but there remained the familiar mask. 
He maintained a steady pace until he came to his small camp in the woods where Tonto was waiting. Hold, 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 hold. The man lay rope both hand and foot on the ground nearby. He's a big fella. How's the prisoner, Ben Tonto? Well, him plenty quiet. I hope those ropes aren't too tight left. Uh, he'll pay for this. You just wait. I enjoyed the meeting. No one suspected I took your place. Not until after I'd left. Oh, uh, you... Did you know what was planned for that meeting? What if I did? Well, I didn't. Not until I got there. And I was glad Tonto and I found you trying on your hood. But lucky we read the message telling you to come to the meeting. What are you going to do about it? First of all, I'm going to see what's in this envelope your boss wanted to sell McFarland. Fill up the fire a little, will you, Tonto? Oh, me fix it. How long do you aim to keep me tied up like this? I don't know, Lefty. Maybe for a long time. That's better, Mike? Yes. Thanks, Kimisabi. It'll do. Yes, I can read these papers now. Uh, what go on at meeting? Six men had these papers that are supposed to prove Rodney McFarland turned traitor and died before a firing squad. Oh. McFarland would pay a lot to keep the mother of the boy from learning such a thing. Lefty, how did your gang know about Rodney? I'm not talking. Are these uh, affidavits true? I'm not talking. Oh, I doubt that. Who's your boss? Now, look here, mister. I know who you are, see? Yes? I know you're the Lone Ranger. Oh? I also know that no matter what I do or don't do, you won't kill me. But if I squeal, I know the rest of the gang will kill me. Very well. So what are you going to do? First, I'll throw these affidavits into the fire. There. That takes care of the evidence that might break a mother's heart. Huh. Give me your knife, Tom. Huh. Yeah. Thanks. Lefty, I'm going to leave this knife where you can reach it. You'll manage some way to cut the ropes. You, you mean you... I've done what I wanted to do. The affidavits are destroyed. By the time you get loose, we'll be gone. Come on, Tonto. Ah, me for hearing. Come right here. Adios, Lefty. Give the boss my best regards. Let me pull up there. One, two, three, up, scout. Masked man and Tonto rode but a short distance before they slowed their horses to a walk easy, until easy, conversation easy. became possible. Easy. Then the Lone Ranger gave a detailed account of his visit to the shack. And in spite of those affidavits, I don't think Rod McFarland died a traitor's death. Oh. If he had, I think the father would have heard about it. Tonto, I think the whole thing was planned so those crooks could rob McFarland's bank. Maybe that right. They'd take everything if they had the chance. They wouldn't stop for the amount demanded. You think papers tell lie? Yes. And why you burn them? Crooks just get other papers. They do. We'll know the papers lie. Meanwhile, we'll try to learn the truth about Rod McFarland. Me wonder. What's that, fellow? Uh, me wonder if Banker let Crooks steal from Bank. I think he'd do almost anything to protect the name of his son. Come on, Silver, let's, let's go! go. following evening when the owner of the general store came to the home of banker McFarland. Mark's in his room, Mr. Smith. He's been feeling a little under the weather all day. I hate to bother him, Mrs. McFarland, but uh, I want to talk to him on some business. Oh, I'm sure to be all right. Go right in. It's my door. Yes, ma'am. Oh, that's you, Will Smith. Mind if I step in, Mr. McFarland? It's after banking and business hours. My business is a little unusual. It's business that was started last night and left unfinished. Huh? I figured you might as well know who I am. But... So I didn't cover my head. But you! Yeah. I'm the one that made a proposition to you about some sworn statements. Why, you, you... Steady, Mac. Those papers were taken away. Not the original ones. That's why I'm here. Which will you have us take, McFarland? The happiness of your wife and the son and wife of your dead boy? Or some money from your bank?
The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Continue our story. Steve Smith, the owner of the general store, leaned back with a self-satisfied grin on his scheming face when he finished issuing the ultimatum to Banker McFarlane. You, you said the masked man got nothing but the copies of the statements? That's right. But when we get what we want, we'll give you the originals. Uh, what are your plans? I mean, suppose I agree to let you help yourself to the money in my bank. We'll see you're kept out of it. We'll bust a lock and go in. Then we'll blow the safe and take the 15000 And uh, then? Then you get the letters. That's all there is to it. Uh, when would you take the money? We'll have to make our plans and let you know. And it's up to you to see we don't get disturbed. Savvy? Yes, I see. Make up your mind. What's it to be? You'll have to take the money. I'll do what I can to make good on the loss. Good. You'll hear from me soon. Steve Smith left the house, and for several minutes, McFarlane sat alone, head bowed. Then he heard a voice. McFarlane. Huh? Take it easy. I came through your window. Uh, mask. I was at last night's meeting. You? And I left a silver bullet. The Lone Ranger. I want to help you. Uh, no one can help me. Who? Huh? Who was that man? You saw him? I heard most of the conversation. Who was he? Steve Smith. He's the storekeeper. That's what I thought. He has the post office in his store. That's right. He's postmaster. That puts him in touch with people all over the country. Yes. I took some cash last night. I'll return it. Oh. Here. Oh, thanks. Uh, now, give me a chance to help, will you? But how? There is no way to help me. I, give me one week. A week? Yes. Tell Smith you'll have to wait a week. Tell him you've got to get cash in the safe. Tell him anything that will postpone the robbery. Give me a chance to do what I can. I've heard about you. I've heard you've done things that seem impossible. But this, if you do anything to protect the people's money, at the same time protect my wife's happiness, you may have all I've got. Don't think about that, McFarland. night, Steve Smith had a message that took him away from his living quarters in the rear of the general store. As soon as he left the building, the Lone Ranger and Tonto slipped in through a window. Now, Tonto, we've got to work fast. Smith won't be gone long. Ah, no matter how fast we work, it takes plenty long time to search everything. Uh, me start looking under carpet, huh? Just turn the carpet back and leave it that way. I'll open some of the drawers in this chest. Uh, that'll do. Now, this desk. Leave the rug that way, Kimosabi. Pull the mattress off the bed while I shuffle the papers in this desk. Me fix that. Uh, that'll do. Now, you not look at papers in desk. No, we won't take the time to search. It won't be necessary. Not search? No. Then why we come here? We want Steve Smith to think we've made a search. That's all that's necessary. Steve returned in half an hour. 
He saw the disorder in the room and jumped to a conclusion, just as the masked man had expected. Search. Doggone. I wonder if they found what they were after. I better find out. Look, Toto. He's going to the fireplace. Ah, let me see him. Duck beneath the window if he looks this way. Loose rock in the fireplace. So that's where he hides things he doesn't want anyone to find, huh? He's got plenty of paper in there. Those are the papers I want to see. We go now. Take them away. No, Toto. Not yet. Him put them back in the hiding place. As soon as he goes to bed, we'll have a look at the things he's keeping so well hidden. I think we'll learn a lot. It was a couple of days later when Steve Smith sent out word of another meeting of his hooded followers. They met as before in the isolated cabin. And as before, their heads were covered. I know who each one of you is. It would be best if you don't know each other. So keep them bags over your heads, Sammy. I'm sure there's no spies among us like the last time when the masked man came in my place. I'm sure. Seen any sign of that masked man, boss? My house was searched. What? Huh? I think he didn't do it. They didn't find anything. What about the bank plans? That's why I called you boys together. McFarland has finally given me a date that'll work out all right. When? This week, Saturday. Mm. How do you know for sure we won't be walking into a trap? I'm not worried about that. McFarland's no fool. He knows that his folks will learn about Ronnie if we don't get the cash we're after. That's right. As soon as we're through cleaning out the bank, we'll take charge of McFarland. Yeah, How do you mean? We'll see that he disappears. People will think he stole the cash and lit out for parts unknown. Savvy? Yeah, that's that's good idea. McFarland will be in the bank on Saturday night. He'll be waiting for us there. We'll meet here as soon as it gets dark and go to the bank together. Saturday proved to be a moonless night. The group of hooded men that approached the bank was barely visible in the faint light of the stars. Each of you do his part. Yeah. I got a team hitched to the buckboard and the whole rig over amongst the trees. Good enough. We're all here. We're all here. No strangers among us. Is Mac inside there? Yeah. The door's unlocked. I've got the papers right here so Mac can see him if he wants to. Now come along. I'll leave. The rest of you stay close behind me. He's in the office and back. Yeah, he's taking us, ain't he? Yeah, sure thing. We gotta be careful we don't make noise. It'll be heard by someone on the outside, that's all. I'm in here. We're coming. I'll meet the light alarm. No. Pretty dark in here. That's how we want it. We'll strike matches for any light we need. Did you unlock the safe like I told you? That's not necessary. I took out the cash you demanded. I told you to unlock the safe so we could help ourselves. If you didn't follow orders. The safe is unlocked. Try it. Right. He's telling the truth. What about the envelope of papers you promised me? Being as the safe's open, we probably won't need to show you the papers. Clean out the safe, boys. No, oh, wait! Shut up, McFarlane. The amount you demanded. We'll take that along with the rest. Cable them over the shoulders, Mag. What? It's a gun in your back. No, wait. You need not go this far for real. We're going whole hog. Give me them hands. No. I'll tie them. So that's it. You're going to take all there is. You're going to double cross me. Save your breath. I'll save it. After I've made one more statement. You just remember that it was you who broke faith. You didn't hold to what you promised. So what about hold it? Hold your hands still. You deserve what comes. Remember that. We'll take our chance Good. on that. Then you've no cause for a complaint. Get them up. What? Right. It's the law that's speaking. Watch them. You're all covered. Hey, hey, hey. Shoot the first to resist. The sheriff. Double cross. Aye. It's a double cross that backfired. Get your lamp going, boys. Bosh, you fool. Shut up. Hurry up with that light. You'll regret this, McFarlane. Aye. We shall see. Turn that lamp high. You'll be sorry, McFarlane. For this trick, I'll make sure your wife, your daughter-in-law, and your grandson hear everything. Take off the hoods. We'll see who we got. Take your hands off. It's Jake and Lefty. And Steve Smith. Well, surprises, huh, boys? Sheriff, let me explain. Now listen, Sheriff. I... Save it for court. Hold on, Sheriff. We came here on a business deal. That's the truth, no matter what Mac told you. We came to sell him this envelope. I don't agree with the talk we heard when you were tying up the banker. See for yourself. Look in this envelope. You'll see why Mac wanted it. 
What's more, you can't charge us with robbery because we didn't steal anything. Oh, yes, you did. We didn't. We didn't touch a cent of the bank's money. We didn't even break in. I know you didn't. But that isn't the charge against you, Steve. It's the robbing of the mail. What? That's right. You stole a letter that was sent to McFarland. The letter you kept hidden back of a stone in your fireplace. Why, you... And the rest of you are as guilty as Steve. You were accessory. Yeah, well, sure. How'd you know about a letter? Because I told him. Well, Masked man. The Lone Ranger. You. I went to see how you could prove that McFarland's son was shot as a traitor. I was surprised to find a letter from Captain Langdon. One that should have been delivered to McFarland. You must have known that McFarland was eager for word from his son. Of course he did. I kept asking for a letter every time I went into the store. When you saw an official envelope, you stole it, opened it, then thought of a scheme to make the banker pay. Steve, why'd you get us mixed up in it? He was too darn yellow to do anything by himself. He had to have half a dozen men to back him up. Just a minute. You say I stole that letter. Well, you found some statements that have been forged, didn't you? Yes, I did. All right, then. You just prove I didn't forge that letter. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You just prove there really was a letter from Captain Langdon. You think I've been wasting time since I found the letter? What do you mean by that? I've been to Gorman's Pass. Gorman's Pass? Yes. That's where Captain Langdon lives. Andy, Andy! Oh, it's Mary. Oh, Andy, oh. oh. Oh, what's this? Mark and Steve Smith and the sherry. Yeah, it's all right, Mary. Mary, why did you come here? Mark. Come home at once. Oh, the surprise I have for you. Surprise? It's your lady. It's Rodney. Come home. Uh, Rodney? Mary, you say he's home? Aye, Andy. And his army captain is with him. Captain Langdon is the name. What's that? <laughs> Between the eyes, eh, uh, Steve? But uh, that is uh, a letter. Our boy alive. Rodney was wounded and bad. He needed care and attention. And that's the letter? What letter? Uh, go on, Mary, go on. The captain wrote to tell us we should come and get our lad. And we didn't get the letter. So? The captain got no reply. He didn't know what to do. He wrote again. And again there was no reply. And then a masked man... <gasps> it must have been you. That's right. You went to see the captain. You told him to bring our boy back home. Uh, Mary, uh, tell me one thing. Just one thing. Was our lad in good repute? You asked that of our Rodney? Andrew, for shame. Our lad was a hero. <laughs> our boy, a hero. <laughs> oh, Mary, this is a night to remember. <laughs> Andrew, why should you be surprised? Rodney could be nothing else. Go on, Mac. Go home to your son. We'll take care of things here. But first I must thank the mass man. One silver. He's gone. <laughs> Mary, <laughs> the Lone Ranger don't wait for thanks. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.